Greetings world. We are anonymous. Greetings world. We are anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. As of January 11, 2018 you can only register a restricted or prohibited firearm if you have a possession and acquisition license and the firearm was verified. There is no need to register non-restricted firearms in Canada, which doesn't make sense because every firearm should be registered. Isn't this part of gun control? In October 2014 the Public Safety Minister and the Conservatives introduced another bill, known as the Common Sense Firearms Licensing Act. This legislation reduced required paperwork for the transportation of restricted firearms, held by licensed firearms owners, for certain lawful activities such as transportation to a shooting range and to gunsmiths or gun shows. It lifted the ban on the Swiss Arms Classic Green Carbine, introduced a six-month grace period for firearms license renewals before an individual might otherwise face criminal charges and abolished the possession-only license permitting holders of such licenses to enjoy the same full acquisition privileges as APAL holders. Six months is too long of a grace period. Someone may not renew their license within that six months and then go crazy with the gun. A bill to reduce paperwork. We shouldn't be making it easier for the government, or easy to get a firearm. There should be paperwork related to the transportation of restricted firearms. Otherwise something may slip by. Public Agents Firearms Regulations, which took effect on October 31, 2008 require public service agencies to report all firearms in their possession. Agency firearms are those used by employees, such as service firearms while protected firearms are those that have been found or seized or are otherwise being held. Why did it take until 2008 to make this law? Before 2008 officers could have and probably were not honest after doing firearm busts. The Firearms Act provides a legal framework wherein an individual may acquire possess and carry a restricted or a specific class of prohibited firearm for protection from other individuals when police protection is deemed insufficient. This situation is extremely rare. The publicly available version of the RCMP authorization to carry application refers only to protection of life during employment that involves handling of valuable goods or dangerous wildlife. The use of force with a firearm is legal as long as the accused can prove that his or her life was in danger. People under the age of 18 but over the age of 12 may procure a minor's license, which does not allow them to purchase a firearm but allows them to borrow a firearm unsupervised and purchase ammunition. Children under the age of 12 that are found to need a firearm to hunt or trap may also be awarded the minor's license. This is generally reserved for children in remote locations, primarily Aboriginal communities that engage in subsistence hunting. This could make any kid get a minor's license, and to borrow or steal a firearm for all the wrong reasons. I can't believe this is even a law. Anything to do with firearms and the licensing should strictly be for 18 or over. Numerous studies have been conducted to assess the impact of Canada's firearms legislation on firearms-related deaths. Studies have attempted to evaluate three different periods of reform, which involved Bill C-51 in 1971, 
Bill C-17 in 1991, and Bill C-68 in 1995, making the current Firearms Act from 1995, which should also get revised. According to a 1988 study, the use of firearms in Canadian homicides has declined since the legislative changes in gun control and capital punishment in late 1976. However, the study found that the changes in the law had no impact on total standardized national homicide rates. A 1994 report concurred that data from Canada from 1969 to 1985 showed that the passage of a stricter firearms control law in 1977 was associated with a decrease in the use of firearms for homicide but an increase in the use of all other methods for homicide. Another study on the impact of gun control legislation, Bill C-51 in Canada suggests that controlling access to lethal means for suicide may be an effective tactic. A 2004 study looking at the impact of the Firearms Act on suicide found that decrease in firearm suicides was most noticeable in the under-25 age group. Although it was in this same age group that the general suicide rate increased the most, the reduction of firearm suicides was not accompanied by a decrease in overall suicide rates. Another study found that there is no discernible impact on public safety by the firearm program instituted by the Firearms Act. A 2004 study found a significant decrease after passage of Bill C-17 in 1991 in the rates of suicides and homicides involving firearms and the percentage of suicides using firearms. However, more recent studies appear to present a mixed picture. A 2012 study concluded that the data failed to demonstrate a beneficial association between firearms legislation and firearm homicide rates between 1974 and 2008. Some criticized this study since it did not take into account suicide deaths, which account for three quarters of gun deaths. According to 2010 data available at Statistics Canada, over the past 30 years firearm-related homicides have continued to decline. Moreover, much of the decline in firearm-related homicide since the early 80s can be attributed to a decrease in homicides involving a rifle or shotgun. We are anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.